What's good YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Mr. NBA 2K and today I'm going to give you guys the best defensive tutorial for NBA 2K17. Now this is going to be a three part series so I'll put up the other two videos soon. In this video I'll show you guys the new defensive options we have available in NBA 2K17. I'll also show you guys what pre-rotate does because it was unclear to a lot of people and I've gotten a lot of comments about it. I'll also go over the old defensive settings for those of you who are new to this. The second video will be on the defensive options that we have on the court. And the third will be the best scheme to shut down any team in NBA 2K17. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see the rest of these videos and other offensive tutorials that I will be doing throughout the year. Okay, so the first new settings we have is help rules. When you select help, then there will be a weak side help when one of your defenders get beaten on defense. When you select no help, then no defender will respond when someone is beaten on defense. As you can see, Kyrie is just walking through the zone and no one is responding to him. I prefer this because I don't have to worry about help coming from all other directions. I can always be help defense, so I'm really glad 2K added this in the game. We also have screen help rules, which is new. When you select help and no rotation, then the defenders will only come from the person involved in the pick. No one else on the court will respond. Now this is perfect for when pick and rolls is ran and you have people coming from the corner to try help out on defense. No one else on the court will rotate over to help. Only the guy in the pick and roll will help out. Also extend pressure is new as well. Basically all that means is that you're going to check the player from full court. This is perfect against players like Stephen Curry who could shoot from deep. And it also helps to bring down his stamina. So I really like this one. I use this a lot. Then we have tag on roll which is one of my favorites. As you can see Paul George keeps his hand on Kyrie to keep him from a clean roll to the basket while still focusing on his main objective which is guarding LeBron. And I really like this one because this is going to help stop rolls from getting to the basket easily especially with all the contact animation 2K has in this game. And now for the one that everyone has a problem understanding, pre-rotate. Okay basically the only person I put pre-rotate on for is LeBron James. And Paul George is guarding LeBron James, so look and see what Paul George does on this play. Okay, so Thompson sets a pick on Kyrie, Paul George picks up Kyrie, then he goes back and pick up on Thompson. He stays with Thompson, stays with him, goes back to LeBron, comes back to Thompson. Alright, a pick is going to be set. He stays between LeBron and Thompson. He picks up on Thompson. So, as you can see, that's basically what pre-rotate does. It tells Paul George, if there's any help side defense needed, you need to pre-rotate off of LeBron to go and bring help. And that's what that does. We also have some new hedging options but first I'll cover the old ones just in case some of y'all don't know what they do. So here we have soft hedge as you can see Paul George shows on the pick and he waits for Teague to recover and then he goes back to LeBron James. Then we have hard hedge which is the same as soft hedge but Paul George steps a little higher to Kyrie and he waits for Teague to recover and then he goes back to LeBron but because of how high he steps up he most likely won't recover in time. I don't use this because I like to manually fight around pick and rolls. Then we have double which is pretty straightforward. This is when you want to get the ball out of someone's hands, maybe it's Stephen Curry and you don't want him to take the last shot so you double after the pick and roll. Now this is the new one we have for hedge and this one is called catch hedge. And for this one Paul George sits back instead of stepping up to Kyrie while waiting on Teague to recover. This is perfect against players like Rondo who can't shoot the ball so he just sits back and just wait for the, for the guy who's cutting the basket. Then we have stay attached which basically tell Paul George I want you to stay with LeBron James regardless of what happens on the pick. So that way LeBron James doesn't get open for a roll to the basket. And now for the old settings for on ball pressure we have gap for people like Rondo and Tony Allen who you want to bait into shooting. For moderate that is for people with average jumper and who can also beat you off the dribble. Tight is perfect for people like Kyrie, Curry because you don't want to give them space to dribble because they can break your ankles. And we also have Smother for people like Lillard, Curry and Kyrie and other players who are a threat from beyond the arc. You don't want to give them space to shoot. Then we have Deny, which is perfect to keep the ball out of players hands so they won't get a chance to maybe take the final shot or something like that. Then we have Force Baseline which is pretty straightforward as you can see based on the way Paul George is standing he's sending LeBron to the middle of the court. I usually send guards to the middle of the court to avoid baseline cheese. Then we have forced baseline. As you can see based on the way Paul George is standing, he's sending LeBron James to the baseline. I usually use this for bigs because I want to use the baseline as an added defender. Now for the last one we have the different post position. This is from the post and I don't recommend this because if the pass is successful then it's going to be an easy two points. Then we have behind and I don't like this one either because Paul George can't defend or help out on defense while he's being posted down like this. Then we have three quarter top 
where you give the post player the option to roll to the middle. I don't use this one either. And then this one is my favorite, which is three quarter bottom, where you force them to the baseline. This is perfect because the baseline acts as a second defender and because the way Paul George is positioned, he can still help out on people cutting to the basket in the middle. So that's it for the video guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more NBA 2K tutorials. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.